Most of you already know about the anonymous creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto. But have you ever wondered who was the first person to actually use Bitcoin? Who on earth got in so early to receive the first ever transaction of Bitcoin? It was none other than Hal Finney. In this video, let's take a look into the life of the cryptographic genius who helped build the foundation of Bitcoin. Before we start, please consider liking this video if you do end up enjoying it in the end. It helps out the channel a lot. Now, without wasting more time, let's begin. Hal Finney was born in California on 4th May 1956. Growing up, he didn't think much of himself and was a modest kid, even though he scored very well in his class. If he liked a subject or a topic, he became obsessed over it and couldn't think of anything else other than that. This allowed him to focus intensely and get really good scores in particular subjects. Later on in life, computer and software became one of his major interests. He experienced the state of flow very often during coding and could write code that would normally take months to complete in only a few days. After graduation in 1979, he joined a software company that developed video games. He had worked on games such as Adventure of Tron, Armor Ambush, Astro Smash, and Space Attack. most of which were received positively by critics and gamers alike. Hal Finney is considered a hero in the eyes of many old games and console collectors, as he was one of the earliest game developers in the industry. He remained in the gaming industry for only 4 to 5 years, but had a big impact in that short time period. Soon, Hal's interest shifted to a new emerging form of technology, cryptography. In 1996, he got involved with Phil Zimmerman, who was developing a cryptographic software which later turned into the software we now know as PGP. Hal started working with him and became the second employee of the PGP corporation after the founder Phil Zimmerman himself. PGP provides privacy and authentication for data communication and is the most widely used email encryption software in the world. He stayed with the company for the rest of his working life. Meanwhile, in the early 1990s, he became an active member of the cypherpunk community. The cypherpunks were individuals advocating for widespread use of cryptography and privacy in online applications. They communicated with each other through a private email list. On 31st October 2008, the cypherpunks received an email containing the link to the white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto. This is when Hal Finney was first introduced to Bitcoin. Hal was not new to the digital currency idea. In fact, he had made attempts to create his own proof-of-work-based currency, reusable proof-of-work system, back in 2004. He also wrote two articles, one for the need of anonymous digital cash to improve privacy, and another on how we could detect double spending way back in 1993. That's about 16 years before Bitcoin's launch. So you can already see how far ahead Halfini was for his time. But it turns out Satoshi's email wasn't very well received at first. Or in Hal's words, when Satoshi announced Bitcoin on the cryptography email list, he got a skeptical reception at best. This was because cryptographers had seen many grand schemes before with countless flaws in their system. But this didn't stop Halfini and a few other cypherpunks to get interested in the project. They knew that the need for decentralized payment system was real. Therefore, Hal Finney was among the first people to respond positively to Satoshi's P2P cash system. When Satoshi released the first version of Bitcoin, Hal grabbed it right away. He became the first person to actually run the Bitcoin blockchain, apart from Satoshi himself. He started mining Bitcoin from around block 70. This is also when Satoshi sent him 10 Bitcoins to test the network. You can view this transaction on block 170. In the next few days, they started having conversation via email. Hal reported on many busts and suggested improvements during the early stages of development. This effectively made him the first programmer to work on the Bitcoin open source code. He had also predicted in one of the emails to Satoshi that if Bitcoin were to be successful, then it could theoretically be worth more than $10 million per coin. How crazy is that? After a few days of development, Bitcoin's blockchain became pretty stable. He mined several blocks over the next few days, but turned it off since the computer ran hot and the fan noise started getting annoying. He later says, in retrospect, I wish I had kept it up longer. <laughs> 
but then also expresses how incredibly lucky he was to be there during the early stages of Bitcoin. Now knowing all this information, you can see why many people consider Hal Finney to be Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Uh, so one possibility is that it's Hal Finney, um, because uh, Hal Finney was uh, kind of also active in the Bitcoin community. Do you think he knew who Satoshi was? If he, if was he wasn't Satoshi, Satoshi, he probably know. Another piece of evidence for the case is that the man named Satoshi Nakamoto lived in the same neighborhood as Hal, just a few blocks away. Though his original name was Satoshi Nakamoto, he had changed it to Dorian Nakamoto a while back. He was later confirmed to have no involvement with Bitcoin and didn't even know what it was until people found out about his name. So it's possible that Hal found his neighbor's name cool and made it as an alias online, right? It's possible, but very unlikely. Both men publicly denied being the founder of Bitcoin and say they have never met each other before. Yet one should wonder, what are the odds that the man to receive the first transaction of Bitcoin lived in the same neighborhood as the Japanese man who was previously named Satoshi Nakamoto? Seems too perfect to be a coincidence, doesn't it? But it's totally possible that indeed it is just that, a coincidence. I suppose we'll never know for sure. In late 2010, Hal came across Bitcoin again. He was surprised to find that the software he helped debug and kick off was not only still running, but also had monetary value. So he dusted off his old wallet and was relieved to discover that his bitcoins were still there. He later says that he had transferred the bitcoins to an offline wallet for his children in hopes that they be worth something in the future. This was when bitcoin was worth less than a single dollar. Unfortunately, this is also the time period when things took a downturn in Hal's life. One day, while training for a full marathon, one of his friends noticed that his speech wasn't sounding right. He at first didn't think of it much, but soon started noticing it himself. His voice started getting blurred and slurred and he wasn't able to talk as clearly as before. He got checked up at the hospital and took a lot of tests that turned out negative. But finally, one test turned out positive. He was tragically diagnosed with ALS. His body began to fail, he slurred his speech, lost strength in his hands, and his legs were slow to recover. ALS is a crippling disease that slowly takes away all the motor neurons that control our muscles. It first starts with weakness and then slowly paralyzes the whole body. It is usually fatal in 2-5 to five years. So he knew his time was very limited. On August 28, 2014, after battling ALS for 5 years, the disease finally got him. Over 20 years before his death, Hal Finney had arranged to be cryopreserved with the Alcor Foundation. So after he was proclaimed legally dead, Alcor's standby team went into action, restoring circulation, ventilation, administrating an array of medications and initiating external cooling. He was now being cryogenically frozen in hopes of being revived in the future. But rest be assured, he did not have illusions about the certainty of being resurrected. He only hoped that someday he would come back. Hal always looked forward to the future. He wanted to be there. And this was his way of getting there. Hal now resides in an aluminium pod inside a 10 foot tall tank filled with 450 liters of liquid nitrogen designed to keep him in a state of complete stillness. That was the wild story of Hal Finney. He may have passed away, but his contribution and work towards building a whole new industry of cryptography in its infancy will never be forgotten. A true legend indeed. May he rest in peace. There are so many great things that happen in crypto that, are, that go largely unnoticed. Hence why Crypto Stories is a new series I'm trying out on this channel. From all the backneck speed of innovation and development, startups and companies, founders and investors come hundreds upon hundreds of awesome and intriguing stories just like this one. And someone needs to record them. So I'll try my best to make videos, essays on as many, or as many people and events as possible. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing for more crypto-related content. Goodbye.